everyone, and welcome to Sister Scholars. My name is Chedza, your co-host, and I am a PhD researcher at the University of Chester. My research is centred on exploring the lived experiences, career trajectories of black women teachers from across the UK. Right then, so I guess the next thing that we're going to be speak, speaking about is just thinking about how we manage to maintain a work-life balance in the midst of just everything that goes on in life, all of the busyness of life, the the hectic mm. schedules that we have. And I think one of the things that, one of the questions I think we really need to answer is how we actually maintain that balance. Yeah. How do we navigate our spaces in academia, our work roles, whether it's in corporate, mm. whether it's in education, how do we manage all of that within ourselves and our personal lives as well? So yeah, tell me so- Chedza. How do you do it? What's the what's the recipe? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person, Iman, if I'm honest, because I am genuinely still trying to figure out the work-life balance element. Yeah. I don't personally believe that it's there's a there's a singular recipe that can be used as as a blanket sort of method for everybody yeah. because all our lives and contexts are different. You've got some PhD mothers, you've got some PhD um, single persons living at home with parents, you've got PhD f- persons in, in families dealing yeah. with, you know, primary carers for, yeah. for family members, whatever context. You've got people studying in a university that is not local to them. Yeah. So I feel like there are so many variables, so many factors that might impact what work-life balance looks like to you. I told you that I was doing my, started my PhD while teaching. Yeah. So I was holding a full-time job thinking that, oh yeah, I can do my PhD yeah. five to nine yeah. and do my teaching nine to five. In what that world never... does that make sense? That was, <laughs> do you know what it is? Yeah. yeah, that that kind of overworking element, that's a spot for you. That's a young person's yeah. spot because yeah. as you get older, you yeah. realise it's not a, a feasible way yeah. to live. Um, but what work-life balance has looked like for myself is number one, choosing to step away from that nine to five, that yeah. teaching role, um, to give more time to just doing one thing at yeah. a time. Sometimes you're going to have to just do one at a time, pick Definitely. one. And the other thing is going to have to take a back seat. You're going to have to park it for yeah. a little bit until you come back um, and, and take that up again once the other thing's out of the way. So for me, work-life balance was t- stepping away from teaching so I could give a bit more time for that. But then even while I've given full-time attention to being a PhD researcher, I find that there are so many variables that you're still trying to navigate. There's always side projects, research projects, conferences and writing opportunities, family, like sometimes life be life in while you're trying to be a PhD student that every single month, every single term, every single academic year, you're having to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to navigate those priorities. Um, in my day-to-day journey, what work-life balance looks like to me is just little habits that allow me to protect time for certain yeah. things. Um, so last year, I made a decision to find a way to get myself away from my desk. So yeah. I work from home 90% of the time. That must be really difficult, like just trying I, to, <sighs> just trying to, I guess, differentiate between yeah. your personal time, your free time yeah. and work time. So yeah. how do you do that? Well, at one point I was working just round the clock, like wake up, roll out yeah. of bed and my computer is in the next room. So I literally walk five, five steps and I'm there and the office is wow. there. And it was really difficult. Like there was some times where it was getting ridiculous that I'd literally wake up, put my robe on, brush my teeth and be like, let me just set up my emails. I'll go and have a shower, have breakfast. I'll do whatever else. Two, three hours later, I'm still setting up wow. before I start my working wow. day. And have you even had a coffee? I ha- have you even had I'm still a in bite a ro- to I'm eat? still in my pyjamas. Like I haven't even gone and, and, and set myself yeah. up for the day. And it was getting ridiculous at one point. That, that's why I decided I need some habits that will get me away from the desk and only allow me to be at my desk during working yeah. hours, during the protected time, which is for work. So that meant that on evenings, I needed to commit to socials. I started, yeah. a net, started netballing. Love that for I've you. I've played netball since I left uh, high school. love that for you. <laughs> I used to play netball in school yeah, as well. Since, and it was just the best 11. thing ever. So I started, um, I joined a netball team. Wow. So every Wednesday night, play netball, hashtag play Love netball um, on Wednesday nights. Then I ended up starting swimming with my husband. So wow. Tuesday nights, we have a little ritual. We've been going swimming for a year, How haven't we, Sam? How cute is that? <laughs> um, 
And then later on towards the end of last year, joined another netball league on a wow. Monday night. So then, and on a Thursday night, we have a group with my church and we all gather yeah. together in small groups. Then Friday night, we've had an on- ongoing games night. Yeah. So I've had this kind of structure to my week that every evening I'm looking forward to a very specific activity. Yeah. That means I have to by force, by fire, log off work. Yeah. I have to leave my desk. Wow. And it's I'm committed to other people. It's yeah. not just me saying... Yeah go to bed now. I'm committed to meeting other people and stepping away from the work helped me. I don't know, it just helped me to kind of just log off, close yeah. tabs mentally, close all them tabs up in my mind. Um, what else have I done? I think day to day in terms of access to information and access to me, mm. I realised that stepping away, from, stepping away from COVID, we didn't really step away from that way of working where yeah. everything was remotely accessible. I feel like we became overly accessible Definitely. to each other. Email at any time, Teams Definitely. meeting any time, phone call any time. And yeah. it's just like, sometimes just stop emailing me. Sometimes you won't hear from me for the next 10 to 15 working days because it's not that deep. Stop exactly. messaging me. And it's all right. Yeah, it's really okay. But I, I, there was a point where I felt like, you know, if, if you don't reply, you know, you look like you're not a serious yeah. candidate. You look, you know, you might miss an opportunity. That that fear of missing out that, oh, yeah. you know, that there might be something that I need to access or the opportunity now, might pass me by. Now. I'm like, miss me with all of <laughs> miss that, Miss me please. with all that. It's really <laughs> Not that I'm deep. not concerned about that. Do you know what I mean? So I've had to set some boundaries yeah. by, you know, putting you out of office. Yeah. If a meeting invitation comes and I'm not available yeah. or that day is already full, let me not squeeze it yeah. in. I am unavailable yeah. because I don't have the headspace to be doing seven meetings in one day. How many hours? I don't know how you do that. Honestly, <laughs> don't know how you do it. Like it's it, it was becoming ridiculous. It was becoming yeah. unreasonable yeah. that I had to say, do you know what? I'm going to have to start blocking time yeah. so I started activity blocking my wow. week so it was you know Mondays and admin day I'll take all the meetings there but the rest of the week don't at me for meetings yeah. I'm unavailable and it was protecting writing time in certain days of the week so having to just set some personal disciplines and everybody getting yeah. used to my way of working yeah. and, and and working around my structure helped me to kind of wow. establish some degree of balance wow. I, I hope that, that answers your question. Yeah, it definitely does. <laughs> and it just seems as though, just as a person, as an individual now, like it, I can see that it definitely has had a, had a positive impact on your well-being. So yeah. I'm here for all of that. Mm. And I love that for you. And I love mm. that you've just taken the time to to really think about yourself and put yourself first, put your own needs first yep. as well. Because at the end of the day, you can't keep pouring into other people, into other things, projects, whatever it might be, if your own cup isn't filled. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But what about for you though, Iman? What what does work-life balance look like for you? So I guess for me, work-life balance, it's taken me a while to get there and I still feel like I've got a way to go. Okay. But I think the key point for me that really, that really kind of brought me to that decision where I realised that I needed to to really change mm. something about the way I was doing things yeah. was during lockdown, I'd say. Okay. And it was during my first year of um, full-time teaching. Um, as you can imagine, it was quite difficult mm. because it was COVID. Yeah. So I just wasn't getting um, that contact time, that, yeah. that in-person contact time that I needed um, as, a, as a newly qualified teacher. Mm. So I think for me, it ended up with me spending really long hours at my desk at home working from nine in the morning yep. sometimes till 10 at night yep. I'd be at the desk yep. and I just realized it just wasn't it, it wasn't something that was sustainable mm. it, and I wasn't being as productive as I could have been yep. because of it and I was putting that pressure on myself because as a newly qualified teacher as um as the only black teacher yep. in that space as well mm. and um I felt that I really had to do more I had to I had to... I know the ones. <laughs> yeah. I know the ones. I felt that I really had to put everything out there and yeah. present myself as my best self yeah. every single Capable, day. Capable, competent. Yeah. Above and, and beyond. Exactly. <laughs> and that is is tiring. It's yeah. overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so I started to, to actually find things that I enjoyed doing more. Okay. I started to find things that actually helped me distress, helped me mm. just relax yeah and for me one of the key things and anyone who knows me knows that I love a good walk yeah I love a good walk yes, anywhere <laughs> anywhere green anywhere yep. that's got like a nice pond or whatever mm. it might be I mm. love it mm. and I just feel like just being outside there's something about being outside in nature that just really just it calms me down it Word. relaxes me and you know I'm not um I'm not as um 
I'm not as sociable mm. as others, for example, when it comes mm. to, you know, on an evening um, for you, it works to to make plans with other people. But yeah. for me, I just want to just sit sit in my, sit in my house, just, need just have, read a nice book or yeah. something and just have that quiet space, yeah. that yeah. quiet time. Yeah. Because I think with the nature of teaching, it's really difficult in, in terms of it's, it's very, you engaging with people constantly. All You're day. constantly giving yourself mm. and at times I even saw in myself that I'd come home and and I was wasn't wanting to engage in conversation with my family members because you're done <laughs> yeah I was done for yeah, the day yeah. and I didn't like that at all I really didn't like that mm. and I realized something had to change because yeah. you only get one family yep you only get, you know, you've, you've got your friends, these people yep. that you need to actually spend time with, yep. pour into, and you don't get it. So yep. Yep. I think for me, um, just finding those things that I really enjoy doing, so such mm. as going for a walk. And I think now, more so during my PhD, I've been, I've been trying to navigate it in a smart way. Right. Because I've heard a lot of PhD horror stories. Same. I've heard a lot of them. Where people some, some have, don't survive. Exactly. Some don't survive because not it's not for the week. To the end of the line. Yeah. I feel like we need some sort of survival guide. Yeah, don't we, we? We, that's what we need. That's Emma. what we were missing yeah, at the start yeah, of our journey. That's it. And I think for me, one of the key things that I've started doing is actually blocking out my writing time because right. it's precious. I've seen you going on like these like writing retreats, Iman. Like, can you tell me yeah. about the writing? You're, you're like solo writing retreats. Go yeah. on. So honestly, best thing I ever did. Right, so blocking out writing time in general is a really effective mm. thing to do. And I think it's just a really good way to actually be productive when mm. you're writing because so many other things can get in the way of mm. actually writing mm. when it comes to your PhD. As you've said, yeah. there's so many different things involved in it. But for me, um, recently I've been going on writing retreats. So mm. quite recently I went to North Yorkshire nice. on a solo writing retreat. Beautiful. And it was amazing mm. so I spent a couple of days away nice little Airbnb mm. and it was just great mm. I was just able to just be in my own space my own environment mm. and actually get things done without yeah. those distractions so I was distractions. completely I was completely closed off to the world mm. apart from a few individuals like mm. just checking in yeah. making sure my family know I'm all right <laughs> <laughs> but aside from that it was just me and I was just doing my work yeah. in a in a different environment. And yeah. I think for me, one of the key things is being in different environments. Yeah. Because um when I'm when I've got that fixed routine, I yeah. get bored. I get bored. I get bored. Yeah. So I need to switch it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. I like to go to a coffee shop. Yeah. I love a good coffee shop. Starbucks Cafe Nero, bit love of that, that, bit of that. There yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wherever it might be, even in the garden. Yeah. I was telling you the other day how yeah. I revised my GCSEs mm. in my front garden. Yeah, so yeah. just being in a different environment, I feel like it really does help mm. um, in terms of productivity. So so yeah, writing retreats, blocking out time for yourself, mm. saying no when yeah. you need to say no. Listen, we Practice. need, I don't think that we really know how to use the word no enough. We don't, We no. need to stop being yes people because it's coming at a personal exactly. cost. Exactly. Sometimes, Ex just, do you know, start with no, let no be the reflex, yes. then change your mind if you need to that but is so for some true. reason it's a reflex like, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And you, you're always trying to figure out yeah. how to serve and be of service yeah. sometimes no that is so just don't. key that is so it's key. not by force yeah it's really not I feel like one thing that I've also started doing and it's really helped with my productivity as well yeah. um and my sanity as well yeah actually is not actually answering until later on yeah so actually saying right let me just give you a minute yeah give me a minute and that's I'll come it. back to you on that's that it. because like you say I felt I felt at times I would have to give an immediate answer yeah. and when you do that you're not necessarily thinking about your the capacity and yeah and I think it's really easy to to just kind of over over commit over commit yourself and that's a really difficult thing. So yeah, what's, I think all these things. What's the moral of the story here, Remember, What's the, the moral of the story <laughs> is just making sure that you are putting yourself first. Yeah. You're putting yourself first. You are, yeah. you are practicing that self-care. Yeah. You are, you are maintaining that balance. Word. Because Word. at the end of the day, life's too short. It's too short. It's too that's short. It. And that's you really it. need to, to, to find importance in other things as well. Word, word. Key takeaway from today. Say no. Say no. Learn to say no. No. Love that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>